Most guitarists learn the first position of the minor pentatonic scale, then feel they have to learn the other four positions to really open up the fretboard. But today I'll show you how to cover a large area of the fretboard just using this one simple symmetrical shape. It really opens up the whole neck, allowing you to create really fresh, new and exciting ideas. And it works over major and minor. And I'll show you the simple hack how. interested in learning about these nuggets of information to help you as a guitar player feel free to subscribe it really shows me that you're interested in this type of content and I'll continue to do more so first let's look at the textbook version of this minor pentatonic scale so as you saw then my lowest note was A on the E string and another A on the high E string and it doesn't really encourage you to use slides and bends like you hear all the pros do. So let's have a look at that symmetrical shape that I was telling you about. So what we do, we actually start on this note here, which is the flat seventh of the key, basically a tone below. And it's important to know that because if we want to shift different keys or play in different positions, we just need to know that we need to play a tone below for this little system, this little nugget of information to work. So we start on the flat seventh, we go up to the root note, we then play the next string down, which is the flat third, then the fourth, then the fifth. And these are all degrees of the scale. Flat seventh, root, flat third, fourth, fifth. So I'd encourage you to spend a little bit of time around here, explore all the different possibilities. I mean, there's lots of slides that you can do. You can do bends. As you build up your vocabulary around this area and to create different licks, you can easily move it into different positions. So if we take that same idea and we move it down an octave, so our first note was our flat seventh, which is the note G. And if we move it down to the third fret of the E string, that's also a G. Remember, flat seventh, upper tone, and that's our root note again. So that's really important to remember. So we'd have the same shape here. Root, flat seventh, third, fourth, fifth. So again, you would explore that area. Then you can link them up quite easily. You have the flat seventh, root, flat third, fourth, fifth. And then here, flat seventh, root, flat third, fourth, fifth. Now the next shape would be on the B and E strings. Our A note on the B string is the 10th fret. So again, take the tone below the flat seventh, and then we can repeat that pattern. So as you can see, we're actually playing a whole range of notes from the, on the fretboard. It just allows us to move quite freely, and you can also come down. But yeah, let's throw a backing track on, and I'll show you how you can interweave between different shapes of the A minor pentatonic scale. So what happens if you want to move this into a different key? Let's take the key, for instance, of C minor. So a C minor chord, you could either play here or here. Take the same principle. You take the root note, go a tone below, and you play the same thing. Just in a second, I'm going to show you how you can use this same framework to play in a major key. But I would say just, you know, explore this in the key of A to start off with, you know, spend a bit of time on each position and trying to link them up and then explore different minor keys. So how do we use this framework to play over a major key? It's simple. You just take the third note of the sequence and then that is your root note. So if we're taking the same position, the same notes as what we did before in the key of A minor, uh, let's have a look at the notes first of all. G, A, C, D, 
E. So we have to look at it slightly differently. A was the root note, which was our second note in, our, in that position. But now we need to think of the third note being the root if we're playing it over a major key. So in this case, it would be the note C. G, A, C, and then D, E. This would work over C major. So that's our first shape. So when we're soloing, just need to be thinking of the third note is the root. And I'll show you over a C major backing track, the same notes and see how that actually fits. Let's just take that into a different key. Let's look at E major. Now we do have an open E string, okay, which is quite easy to find. However, we need to be thinking of where the E note is on the A string. Now, if you don't already know your notes on the guitar, I have done a video, which I'll put in a link in the description, which will make your life a lot easier navigating the fretboard. But I will tell you where the E note is today. It's the seventh fret of the A string, okay, which is the same as our open E. It's just an octave higher. So what we need to think of is how do we now start this shape? Now, if you just went, that would not work. Remember, it's the third note of the sequence. That would have been the first note. So what we have to do is look at the A string root and then go on to the E string on the same fret. So this will be the seventh fret, which is the note B in this case. B, C sharp, E. As you can hear there, that's the third note. One, two, three. Then we carry on the sequence. So it's that simple to take this approach and put it into different keys for both major and minor. Just remembering those two simple things. Major is the third note and minor it's the second note of the sequence. So now you've got the roadmap to actually solo over major and minor in a wide area of the fretboard. But without knowing how to actually make your improvisation musical, then all of this is just gonna be a bit of a waste of time. And that's why you should watch this video up here where I'll give you 10 tips to make your improvising so much more musical. They're really simple, but a lot of people forget about these. So I suggest you go and watch that now and I'll see you over there.